Hi, I'm Michael LaFosse from the Origami Dough Studio. This lesson is on folding my Origami Dollar Llama. It's folded from a single dollar bill, and because a dollar bill is patterned and colored differently on each side, you could do the obverse or the reverse. You'll need a single US dollar bill to make the llama, and the dollar bill must be folded into equal thirds this way. Now you could estimate your folds, overlapping until you get it right, and put your folding in. But if your bill has even printing nicely centered, there's a very quick trick to use to get thirds perfectly. Look for the letter O, this leading edge, and take the opposite short edge of the bill right up to the outside edge of the letter O, and fold. Unfold that flap. And the crease you made is the landmark for the next fold. Take the opposite edge and put it right up into the crease and fold. And you'll have equal thirds. Notice that when you did that, the green side ended up on the outside. And that way you'll know you'll end up with the green llama. If you decide you'd prefer the obverse one, then what you do is unfold and reverse these creases because which way the creases bend is important in these first folds. So you can make your thirds mark, reverse them if you wish, so that at this stage the outside shows what pattern you'll have on your finished llama. Because a dollar bill is small and the rich pattern is distracting, I'm going to use a solid colored sheet of paper that's much larger, but the same proportions as the rectangle of a dollar bill. In fact, I recommend for practice that you do the same thing. Trim some larger rectangles of the same proportions and practice before folding real dollar bills. I need to fold my paper into thirds and I don't have the distinguishing marks on my paper, so I've measured one third along the long edge. This is an 18 inch long sheet of paper, so that's a six inch mark, one third of 18. And I'm gonna to fold to the mark, unfold, and then fold the opposite edge to the new crease. And I have my equal thirds. This llama will be light green on the outside, and for this example, it corresponds to a llama that you would fold for the reverse side, the green side. Unfold the paper fully. There's your equal thirds. Fold in half lengthwise, long edge to long edge. Unfold. Now, fold in half, short edge to short edge. Unfold. We have a one-third section here, a one-third section here, and the center one-third is divided in half. Let's divide one more one-third section in half, like this. Edge to the first crease. and unfold. So your paper looks like this. And on this side, all of the creases are valley creases. They dent in like valleys. Go to the short edge that you just put the new crease in and look for that new crease. Fold the bottom left and right corners in to create a triangle flap with an alignment of edge to crease here and for the other corner the same thing edge to crease turn the paper over to the other side these are all mountain creases raised like mountain ridges take the bottom most crease and make a sharp edge of it and fold it up to the next mountain crease 
look above and find the very next mount crease, make an edge of it, and fold it to the topmost mount crease. Turn your paper over and notice in this section we have a square corner at the bottom and one at the top and this valley crease. Starting at the bottom corner, fold edge to crease. Down here the edges are aligned with the vertical crease. We're going to do the same thing at the top, edge to crease. Unfold and lift the bottom edge up using the creases that we have already in place and fold straight across. So our early creases created this geometry. Another way to do it is to first inside reverse fold, that is to open the paper and push the corner in following your creases, and then simply fold the flap like that. Now let's go to these corners here and there. Fold to make triangle shaped flaps, the top edge of which align with the extra layer of paper edge here. The same thing on the other side. And you can always turn your paper for comfort, like that. Unfold these flaps. You see the triangle shaped area. We're going to inside reverse fold that. So we open the layer, find the triangle shape outlined by creases, push in, and fold in half, flattening it like that. Same thing up here. Open the paper, find the triangle shape, push it in and flatten. These will be the ears of the llama. Here's the tail and we'll have four legs. One, two, three, four. And we need to define these. First I'd like to bring your attention to this horizontal edge of paper and the point where it intersects the vertical folded edge, that point is right here. We'll call that a stopping point, and I'm going to put my thumbnail as a break right on that point. My target point is this corner down here. This will be the bottom end of the front leg. Here's how this fold works. Lift up the bottom edge so that you roll it over toward the front of the llama and you can see how my thumb is working here as a break. Then open a cone shape in here like this. Then continue to roll this moving edge until you're able to make a folded edge that hits the target point down here. And when you've got that all right, right up into the cone, then you can flatten the cone into a triangle like this. And notice the three corners of the triangle up here, down here at the leg end, and up here. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Put your thumb as a break, lift up the bottom edge, open a cone, make your fold to the target point, then roll and flatten to make the shape of the triangle. So we have our four legs. The hind legs are these and we're going to make them a little bit more narrow and that works this way. Here we have a raw edge, a cut edge of paper and an adjacent folded edge. Fold the raw edge to the folded edge. Now lift the flap and you can clearly see a crease line 
and the point where it ends here. This is a pivot point. And our target point is the end of the back leg right here. Lift this free edge. Use your thumb as a brake to establish the pivot point. And you can see how this edge can be moved over now. And we create a folded edge from the pivot point down to the target point. Roll over and flatten the paper. This is called a swivel squash and the leg is narrowed. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Raw edge to folded edge. Unfold. Here's your pivot point. There's your target point. Lift the free edge over. Fold and swivel squash. And there's the other leg. Turn the paper over to the other side and notice this vertical folded edge. We're going to use this as a guide. Take the bottom edge of the neck and fold it to a line with the guiding edge. You need only fold to this point. You'll see a crease running down the middle of the paper here. You need only fold up to that point. Unfold and you see the resulting crease. We're going to do the same thing on the other half of the neck. So we'll use the opposite parallel edge from what we used against the guiding alignment edge and once again fold only to that crease. Unfold. And so you see these valley creases. These are going to help the neck to come up properly. It's also helpful at this point to reverse this crease. Right now from this point to the end of the head it's a mountain crease. So take a moment if you will and just reverse it. So these three creases are all valleys and this spine crease stays mountain. And now it's easy. Just use the creases like this and flatten the paper. Protruding from the front of the neck you can see this extra area of paper. We're going to sink this. So we set up by pre-creasing Take the extra area and fold it tightly over the front edge of the neck. Unfold. Flip the paper over and reverse it. We want to make the crease line flexible. That will make it easier to sink. And unfold. To sink this area we first open the neck and let's take a look at the creases the creases that we've put in establish a rectangle and we're going to begin by emphasizing this short horizontal crease as a mountain crease, a mountain edge like that. Then the vertical outsides of that rectangle and this rectangular area gets sunk, pushing in in the center, making a valley crease like this. And when we get to the short mountain edge, push it this way, not into the neck but into the body, like that. And then close and flatten. So that rectangle is sunk. and the neck looks like this. Here we have an ear flap. Fold it straight down and flat. And the same thing on the other side. Straight down and flat. Here I've prepared an enlarged section of the head to better show how this works. There's a fairly complicated crimp that's about to happen in several stages here. You should pause and replay as many times as you need until you learn this technique well. 
the ear flap has a long folded edge at the back line and it pivots at this corner. I'm going to call this the pivot point. Adjacent to the back edge of the ear is the back edge of the neck. Using the pivot point, we're going to swivel the back edge of the ear to align with the back edge of the neck. So I've aligned them. But now, look inside here to see what's going on. This first layer is rolling over. And while holding these edges in alignment, I'm going to reach inside and flatten where that bends so that it looks like this inside, all the way back into the pivot point, right in there. Then I'm just going to replace it. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Back edge of the ear, pivot point, back edge of the neck. Pivot to align the ear and the neck. Look inside here. And this first layer gets flattened, like that, and restore it. We're going to work on this intersection. And so we can restore one ear. And look what's happening with this folded edge. So we're going to move it onto the layer we flattened when we did the ear and up into this pivot point inside the short end. So you see these layers are copying each other. Restore everything, flip it over, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Pull the ear back into place. Notice the folded edge right in here and how this layer wants to try to copy it now right up inside like that. Now, the both of those sides have been done. Here we have a center crease and we have a corner. We're going to put this corner on the center crease. To do that, we're going to push the layer of the center paper away and down inside there and then roll the layer from the outside in like this. The corner is now touching the center crease and we have a pivot point formed deep inside here. Flatten the paper all the way to the base. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We open in here, place the corners together at the crease and flatten. And the flattening goes all the way down to the base inside here. And so now we've set up for a crimp. Here's This is a crimp right here. And let's see from the outside what happens. We have a pivot point and we have the muzzle we're going to then pivot down you can check to see if your crimp is working and ultimately we want nice clean corners inside the top of the head and the ears to align with the back of the neck And you just gradually flatten everything like that. So that's our crimp, and it's a fairly complicated crimp. Now we're going to lock the end of the nose. So this corner of two layers in the middle can now be folded tightly inside the muzzle like that.
and you can see how that locks the front of the muzzle. Now we're going to fold the ears. First straight up like this. Do the same thing on the other side. Now you could leave the head just like this, but we have more detail that I like to add, so let's do that. Here's the back edge of the ear. Twist it forward. And I like to make sure I have a pivot point further down like this. And swivel squash. So I've created a fold that goes right up to the top corner at the back of the head. Let's do the ear on the other side. So remember it's the back edge of the ear that goes forward. Uh, another way of dealing with this is to twist. So you put your thumb underneath the back edge of the ear and then you use your thumb as a break down where you want the pivot point like that and then turn it. Make your swivel squash like that. And at the back of the head we have these two corners. We're just going to mount and fold them right in behind the head like that. Same thing on the other side. If you want nostrils, you can get them from this layer here. It's up to you the amount of detail you wish. And you may even open the ears like that. Whatever you like. The last thing to do at the head is under the jawline. Up in here where we have our crimp, you can grab the corner and turn it inside and down like that. and then copy with the other one. You see there's a corner inside here, folding it over inside and down. When I'm folding these details in the head and the neck on a dollar bill fold, which is much smaller, I'll often use a pair of tweezers. So here's the finished head. The head and neck and front legs and body are complete. The back leg is okay but we need to make the tail. And you see we have a folded vertical edge here and this point at the top of the back. A short distance behind that point toward the tail you're going to pick up and pinch the paper like this. And that's so we can do an inside reverse fold with this area. So holding firmly to create a pivot point, flatten the center crease reverse it from a mountain into a valley, pull it inside. For alignment, use these edges, the back edges of the legs and the back edges of the part that's being moved inside. When they align, flatten. And finally we need to form the tail and narrow the back edge of the legs. So begin by taking one leg back edge along with half the tail and fold that over and then notice there's a folded edge that appears here. That's your guide for the angle and the stopping point. So following that folded edge sharply fold the flap. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Grab the back edge of the leg along with that portion of the tail and fold following the edge inside like that. Unfold those flaps and then open the back end like this and you can see the creases we've created. We're going to mount and fold the perimeter of that shape along these creases here and valley fold that short crease. That's an inside reverse fold. I'm going to do the same thing with the other section. We find the creases and mount and fold. 
push the center in with the valley and fold flat like this. And so we have the tail, but it's not really visible. So what we like to do here is to hold the back end with one hand and then just pull a little bit like this until the tail appears as much as you like. Then reflatten the rump up here. You'll notice that there's a little corner at the end of the tail here. And I like to tuck that in the way we did in the muzzle to lock it. First, I'll pre-crease, which is to fold it on the outside like that. And then I'll take that little triangle flap and tuck it under the first layers here. And that locks the tail, cleans it up. And here's the completed dollar llama. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember to pause and play as often as you need. It's not a beginner's model, but it's a really terrific model for a dollar bill. Enjoy.